Welcome to another post of The Synth and I. Here is the cat <laughs> from The Synth. Uh, this is The Synth, Bookwood 200E, and today's post is regarding MIDI and setting up an iPad controller. I am completely stealing this concept from someone who posted on Muff Wiggler, and I will link uh, appropriately and graciously uh, so to their, uh, well, the gracious that they're sharing their information uh, to the post on the Muff Wiggler that inspired this. Someone uh, mentioned that they had run the Bukla via their iPad, and it inspired me to finally figure out how to do it. The quick version, and it takes a number of steps, but basically you have your iPad, you have a PC, laptop, you need to load Apple Bonjour, which is a kind of virtual driver telling the computer to act a little bit like a Mac and see the iPad. Then I have to run RTP MIDI, which is what I have up here now. That's loading fine. Uh, that then communicates between the laptop and the iPad via wireless. And with the Apple Bonjour, the iPad can be seen. Uh, and then you're still not done. You have to basically load a uh, DAW. I have Acid uh, Pro 7 here. And load a MIDI channel. Map the out of that MIDI channel. Map the in of the MIDI channel to, to what's going on RTP MIDI. Map the out of that to whatever MIDI interface you're using. And I happen to have a physical MIDI interface loaded on my laptop. So although I could run the laptop as a MIDI instrument, from the iPad. My whole goal here is to get over here to the Bukla, and that's what I'm doing. So, basically, iPad to all the gobbledygook going on here, then out from the laptop to the MIDI interface, the MIDI interface, all the way around here to the Bukla. I don't even see the little cable, but he's in there. Anyway, this is the device. This is what I set up. I'll send a screen grab of this out too. But basically, what I have here is a keyboard. I have a number of continuous controllers, volume, frequency, and so forth. And I'm doing the simplest thing I possibly can. I am just running uh, the single 261 uh, oscillator into the quad, into, into the envelope, into the VCA, out. Uh, that's the simplest thing. And then what we're doing here is a lot of mapping within the MIDI decoder part of the 255. To make things again as simple as possible, pitch, I have the MIDI going in and then everything else is being held on this uh, iPad. I have pitch, note, volume coming out of E and I just happen to map the controller buses to randomly, uh, what I chose was 20 and 21, which correspond to these two little sliders, 20 and 21. Uh, the pitches are being held by the keyboard. The way I set this up is I have a little keyboard. Uh, this is C3 through C4. The red little one here and the one in the end are an octave up and below. So that's C2, that's C5. And then these white ones are actually toggle on switches. They're complete hold switches. So the actually works great. Uh, those are our momentary uh, keys like you would have on a piano. And the yellow ones down here are touch uh, hold. So I'm not really playing music, but I'm going to show you the demo really quick of what I've done here. I have mapped, since I mapped the controllers, I have the controllers going into the symmetry and high order of the 261. So rather than keep playing over and over again, I'm just going to hit a C. let go. But here's the cool thing, uh, the continuous controllers. So let's hit uh, G. And I'm going to lower that so you can hear my voice. Uh, now when I adjust continuous controller 20, it should adjust the symmetry. Same thing with continuous controller 21, goes to the high order. Mm -hmm. 
And again, both are mapped from the two control buses coming out here. So, Not as exciting as uh, it sounds, but actually the possibilities, as they say, proverbially, are endless. So there's a simple controller I made. Uh, it took me a long time to figure it out, but now that I know how to do it, probably would take me about uh, half an hour to make a, you know, really interesting one. Hopefully less. I'm sure anyone talented would be able to do it faster. Uh, and... Uh, I should actually also point out that when I'm doing this, you can actually see the uh, quad function generator uh, trigger going on. That's because I've made a little MIDI patch here uh, and told everything to go through bus uh, or, or through through A. So basically, um, I'm sorry, everything's mapped to instance A. Again, check my foot going for the fun of that. But uh, by setting the instance to A on the quad, uh, two quad units, you get channels uh, MIDI 1, 2, 3, and 4 on the various uh, A, B, C, and D, and the same thing on the quad dynamics mat thing. So I just actually have a cable going here, and uh, whatever I do, I don't have to actually patch from this, from the 220, to the 281. It automatically picks it up. And you can see that there's no patch coming in. That's because it's done via MIDI and the bus. Win-win. All right, that's the uh, crazy iPad controller thing. The great thing about this, of course, is that you can change it to anything you want. I'm sure as I get more crazy, I'll add more continuous controllers. I actually have six in this pad. Um, this is 21 and, or 22 and 23, which I don't have mapped to anything here, but I can. Um, the drag about this is it's not touch sensitive, although if you want to get uh, excited about it, you can actually obviously go into the velocity in of the 292 and figure that out and also come out of the 228. I'm sorry, 225. All right, fair enough. That's the synth and I. This is the synth. That's the iPad. That's the cat. Thanks.